Hi, this is Catherine, and welcome back to Taking Tea with Catherine. And this is an herbal infusion because I can't have caffeine right now. I'm way too excited for what I'm going to talk about. And it is Tailors of Harrogate, Blackberry and Raspberry Herbal Infusion. Fruit infusion, really. Since 1886, this, this, um, this tea company has been around. 1886. And that means it's Victorian. Maybe not this particular blend, I don't know, but it's Victorian. So it kind of works with what we're going to talk about today. And if you're looking for a caffeinated pairing, obviously any tea would be good for reading Victorian literature. But the name of this and the picture kind of goes Victorian London Fog by Harney and Sons. And it tastes amazing if you make it into a latte. Thing is, this, this is derived from London Fog Latte, which sounds very Victorian, sounds very nice, but actually it wasn't originating, it wasn't, it did not originate in the UK. I read somewhere that it originated in Vancouver, Canada, so I think that's true. Either way, it's not necessarily Victorian, but this one says Victorian, so there you go. Enough talk about tea, we have to talk about books. So this is my TBR for Victober. 2019, my first Victober, and I've always loved reading Victorian literature. Um, ever since I was a teenager, I was, I've been reading Victorian literature and loved it, but I always go off, I always go for a while where I'm reading a lot of it, and then I kind of go off for a while, and I have a little Victorian renaissance, so I remember reading it, yeah, in the 90s, and then at some point about 10 years ago, I started reading a lot more, I started reading a lot of Dickens and some Trollope. And they're all fantastic, and um, and I think some Bronte as well, although I did most of my Bronte reading in my late teens, early 20s. Um, but it's always amazing, but I, I never give myself enough time to read enough Victorian literature, just here and there nowadays. And I thought, this is a great opportunity to tackle some of, and not tackle as in, oh, this is hard, but get back on the, get back into it. So this challenge has, let me see, one, two, three four hosts and I will mention all of their individual challenges and what I plan to read along with these challenges. I mean generally it's read Victorian literature which is anything from I think you know England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland because that yeah um, that was that came out between is it 1837 to 1901 I think or was it 1837? Yes because Victoria was born in 1819 and she would have been 18 right? I'm doing math. Stop me. Okay. So I'm going to start with the challenges and what Catherine is going to try to read. And I'm probably not going to read all of this because I'm not the fastest reader, especially with Victorian stuff. I have to really savor it. It's like afternoon tea, which also was a Victorian invention. You don't sit there and gobble down afternoon tea and all the tears and the scones and the everything. You take your time. So I will read what I can during this month and, and enjoy it. That's all. So the read-alongs are two Oscar Wilde plays, and I really do like Oscar Wilde. I've read um, a few things from Oscar Wilde, but I haven't read his entire... Ah, you never say that word. You know, his body of work. Um, and so these two are definitely two I haven't read, although I've seen adaptations of the first one. So. The Importance of Being Earnest is the first one, and A Woman of No Importance. So a lot of importance. Yeah. Is it going to be important? So this is my volume of Oscar Wilde's works. It's pretty chonky. But um, I also have the picture of... I'll turn it back again. The picture of Dorian Gray, but I read that already, and it was fantastic. And we're not reading that this time. But this book, yeah, it's a little bit of a workout, but that's good. I could, my arms could use some toning just by going into autumn. I'm going to mention how excited I'm about Autumn as well. All right, so that's the first challenge. So here's another one by Ange from Beyond the Pages, lovely channel. They're all lovely channels, by the way. Read a book. No, that's not it. Read a book by a Victorian female author. Bonus, one that's new to you. So I've been trying to incorporate books I already have, but there's a few that I bought recently, and this is one of them. I'm and the last name may actually sound quite familiar to you. Fanny Trollope. Hargrave. Yeah, I still don't remember how to say it's Hargrave. I keep thinking it's Hargreaves. There's a lovely, I guess, dead body in the front 
cover. This is supposed to be kind of a mystery, a bit of a murder mystery or something. I think she's dead. Um, yeah, looks like it. Oh, yeah. Or is it found missing? Known for her diamonds. Oh, perhaps murder. Kidnapping. I'm really rambling, aren't I? But that's okay, because you know what? I have never read this book before, so I don't know much about it. But if it's a mystery at all, and it's probably a very early example of mystery, it incorporates my need to read a few mysteries every month, so that's good. And I, hopefully she's, hopefully I enjoy her writing. I have never read anything by Fanny Traub. I've read some of her son's work, so keep it in the family. All right, next, Kate Howe says to reread a Victorian book. Now, I can read so many books over again, and I would love to, but I wanted to have something that I already had, and I'm in the mood for, and I thought, well, I'm always in the mood for more mysteries, and I love Sherlock Holmes, so the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, I looked into these, and try, I'm trying to read only the Sherlock Holmes that was, that came out in the Victorian era, because there were some that came out afterwards, because, and I'm trying to keep it in, in line. So it looks like, it looks like it's going to work. Arthur Conan Doyle. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I have to look into that. When was he, when did he become Sir? Was it from Queen Victoria? I should know these things. But anyway, I might, see, I needed herbal because I'm, I'm way too wound up right now. Okay. So the lovely, wonderful Katie from Books and Things, you know, who her channel is full of wonderful Victorian literature. So she has two, two challenges, it's, or it's an and or. Read a Victorian book under 250 pages and or over 500 pages. Now, I probably will try to do both. And, oh my, this book is so small, it's, it's really hard to find. In her introductory video to October 2019, um, she showed a couple of these little um, penguin black little black classics and I had a couple of them. I didn't realize that one of them is actually quite Victorian and that is John Ruskin, Traffic. So I don't know, is this supposed to be an essay? What is it? Um, there's a couple of chapters in here or whatever parts. Anyway, it falls very much into the category of 250 pages, page 56. So I think that works. I don't know anything about this, so I will have to go into it kind of blind, but that's okay. I know about John Ruskin. I know actually a lot about him, but um, and maybe I'll talk about him another time because I can never stop talking about that subject as well. Now, over, over 500, this is well over 500 pages. I've been, I've always enjoyed what I've read of Anthony Trollope and almost, not quite, but almost more than Dickens sometimes. It depends on what I'm in the mood for. I can't, I can't do favorites or whatever, but sometimes I've, I've quite enjoyed what I've read of Anthony Trollope. Sadly, I have not read enough. I didn't get quite into the Barsetshire, Barsetshire, Shire, um, Chronicles as much as, as far as I thought I was going to get, but I thought I would start his series because I have, I have quite a few of the books in this series at home. So I ordered the first one of the Pallisers called Can You Forgive Her? And I don't, I mean, I, I like this volume. I don't like this particular copy because I got it online, it's supposed to be used, but it was supposed to be used very good. And I had, I had to clean it, it was dirty. And it has like the mark, like someone must have put their mug or cup or something on there, which as a tea person, I, I would almost sympathize with, but no. And it, yeah, it's kind of dirty, but that's okay because I could beat it up. I could bring it with me everywhere and I might drop it. And if anything happens to it, I will still read it, but at least I don't feel delicate because some of these books are quite delicate. So this is my beat up one, but I'm going to enjoy it. I hope because it's the first of the power series. And I know my sister's read quite a few of these in this series and she's said nothing but good things about it. My sister usually has very good taste in reading. She almost never has steered me wrong. I can't think of an example. So very good. Now, what is next? Or maybe it's finally? Yes. Well, actually, this this already would hold me through October, probably. But Lucy the Reader, who I very much enjoyed my little tiny partaking of the classics a in August. So um, Lucy the Reader says, read an underrated Victorian book from the same year as your favorite Victorian classic. Now, I don't have a favorite Victorian classic. I like quite a few of them 
but I also was trying to figure out a way to incorporate books I haven't read yet and so I did a, a little tweak turnaround thing and I picked a book that I've been wanting to read for a long time and looked up books that came out the same year to see if I could find one of my favorites and the only thing I could find was Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens which I haven't read but I usually like Charles Dickens nine times out of ten eight times out of ten and um yeah because I couldn't get into pick with papers or hard times or the old curiosity shop so uh, anyway seven times out of ten anyway I usually love a lot of Charles Dickens books uh, Oliver Twist but The Tale of Two Cities even though I haven't read it I have a feeling that some, even though I procrastinated on reading, I did. I know I've seen that adaptations and like the story. I think it would be a favorite if I read it. It's a historical novel, so I have to like it, right? So I'm saying this because this book seems to have come out the same year, *The Ordeal of Richard Feverell* by George Meredith. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but at least according to my Google search, it did. So if not, oops, you know. But this is an old, old copy. I found, I don't know where I got this one from. It is ancient. It's got a name in here, Kate Lustig, who, July 1928. And, but I only bought it for 150 so I must have bought it from a library sale. So I've had it for a while, apparently, and that's, I, I love this. I love, I love old books. But I'm, I'm a little, del this is my delicate book, though, even if it was only 150 So, George Meredith. A little a little background of why I find him interesting and he is underrated and I've heard some people say oh George Meredith isn't that good you know everybody has their opinions number one Oscar Wilde liked George Meredith number two Sherlock Holmes was quoted as being interested in talking about George Meredith as a discussion with Watson so already two points in his favor right um, but what I find interesting about him is I am a big fan I mentioned this before of pre-Raphaelite art and the pre-Raphaelite pre brotherhood and the people who follow them. So some of them weren't strictly within the brotherhood, but it doesn't matter because so many of them fall into the same sensibilities and, and art style, etc. The same emotions are evoked by these people, mostly men, male painters, but some women artists. Um, and I just, I just love them. So, you know, they've gone in and out of fashion, but I've always loved them. And one of my favorites is called The Death of Chatterton. And I finally saw it in 2010 in the Tate Britain. And I was so excited when I saw it because um, a friend of mine who, who does photography took a picture of me. Um, she did, first I did the, um, the Ophelia in the bathtub, which was something else. Or maybe I did that second. But I also did The Death of Chatterton, which is basically a painting of the poet who died at 17 years old, despite having written quite a lot of a lot of poetry in the guise of a medieval writer. It's, it's a whole story. I got to I got to get into that another time. But the, the painting, if you haven't seen it, and I wish I, could, I learned how to do that whole incorporating pictures, but it's basically of a man lying in a, I don't know if it's an attic or or a a room anyway, this beautiful window in, um, in London and he's dead, which is horrible, but it's just so, it's like a romantic looking pa painting. He's just like lying there. He's so young, he's pale. He's got, he's got like his writing materials strewn all over the place. And it's just, it's sad, but it's beautiful. You know, like a lot of pre-Raphaelite, like a lot of paintings in general, let's face it. But, um, I think the artist's name was Henry Wallace. I hope I'm getting that right. Sometimes when I'm talking, I forget names, but the model, as a young person, a young man, the model for this painting was George Meredith when he was younger. And I just think that's, that's cool. I mean, you know how people all knew each other back then, apparently. There were a lot of people in London back then, but apparently people knew each other. But you know, when you're in the same field, who knows? I'm going on. And I had read a book and I, about it one time, I, I think it was by Peter Ackroyd, I think. Really interesting novel. It was a novel. And um, it turns out that after, after he modeled for this painter, a little while later, George Meredith's wife left George Meredith for the painter, Henry Wallace. I think that's his name. And it's like a whole, it's like drama, you know what I mean? It's like so much drama. And apparently this book may have come out of that experience. I gotta stop holding things backwards like that. So that is enough of a reason for me to have wanted to read this for a while, but I just haven't. 
Um, but it looks gorgeous. I gotta stop reading in front of you guys. Anyway, so hopefully I'll get to it. It's, it's soft. It's a bit soft. It's lovely. I was also, I, there's also a couple of, um, like, not quite in the categories, but kind of, and runners up that I won't have time to read, but I, if, if I did have time, I would. I have like one day off. That's not weekend. It's, um, I took off, I think Columbus Day or something. I don't observe Columbus Day, but I just, I just took the day. And so maybe I'll use that for reading. Who knows? But that's still not enough to be able to read all of this if you're me. But I've, I started and I left off for a little bit, but I'm, I want to get back into the tenant of Wildfell Hall. I know I like Anne Bronte a lot, so hopefully I will get back into her soon. And this is a recent purchase. Um, also kind of a mystery kind of book. The, I've read The Woman in White, but I haven't read The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. So I would love to read this. It's a gorgeous picture in, in the front. It, it's, I like this, um, Barnes Noble classics. I like, I like their paperback classics. I think they're kind of, they're kind of nice. I want to, I'm thinking on if I ever redo my shelves, I might put them all together with each other. I don't know. I'm always thinking about things that I never do them or I do them and then I get overwhelmed. What have I done? But okay. So the, the, then there's, okay, I'm not done. I'm not done. The challenge the general challenge, which is not necessarily bleh, 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 bleh. it's not necessarily a book, it's just the way you read a book, is read by candlelight. Now, when I was much younger and I started reading Vanity Fair and I didn't finish it, but I remember trying to read it by candlelight at some point with tea. I was trying to do that and it was good. And I can't do it too much, even though I guess I would have had to in Victorian times, but I have really bad eyesight. So lighting is kind of important to my poor eyes. But that's okay because what I'm thinking of doing for that, and again, I'm putting, now I'm throwing in something else because I'm, I'm a mad woman. Not the mad woman in the attic. That's another Victorian literature reference. I'm sure most of you know that reference. I am not that big into Jane Eyre, to be honest. I don't hate it. I just, it's not my biggest cup of tea. But anyway, I have this lovely copy of the Oxford Book of Victorian Verse. And isn't that gorgeous? I have another one. Turning my back. Don't you love my back? Um, where is it? Oh, heavens. I'm See? Do you like my hair? Anyway, I know. Oh, the Oxford Bur Burk. The Oxford Book of English Verse. So that's nice. But this is specifically Victorian verse and total... Oh, this has got some guy's name in here. Ronald Thomas. You know what? My last name is Tom. We might be related. Not. So this was uh, chosen by Arthur Quiller Couch, this collection. Which I'm only talking about because I've talked a few weeks ago about um, Helene Hanf, 84 Char Charing Cross Road, and that was like her her literary guru. She read a book by him and just started reading everything he talked about, every book he talked about, and that's how he, she got into in touch with um, the, the bookshop in 84 Charing Cross Road. Uh, so anyway, see, do you see the, what a nerd I am? What, what a complete nerd I am about this sort of thing. Anyway, I'm extremely excited. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm not going to rush myself because Victorians, I don't think they rush that much, right? I mean, well, I guess they were sort of, they were sort of into speed because isn't that around when the, the railroads were starting up? Because, um, yeah, basically ish. But anyway, <laughs> so that's my TBR for Victober. Very, very, very excited. I'm feeling very Victorian right now. And actually, I'm really not. I'm just feeling excited in general. But I hope you like this little list of mine. If you have any comments, if you've read any of these and you have an opinion on them, if one is really, 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 really bad and you need to warn me, please let me know without giving away spoilers. Like if it's like really, really a void. But if it's just not your thing, whatever. But your opinions opinions are always welcome, and I, uh, I thank you for the previous ones, and if you like what you hear, please subscribe. I would love to hear your TBRs. I've already started watching some of them and quite enjoying them so far. So this is Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine, and I hope to see you in October. Bye.